can't help but feel like there is some kind of cognitive dissonance that it says that this is the countdown to the 2020 games and it's in 279 days and it will be 2021 within four months but not letting this one go lightly. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to the video. So today we're going to be spending our time in Tokyo Station specifically. I met up with Dustin from Solar Travel Blog and his video will be linked on either side here. We were doing a collaboration. Please do go check out his video, it's awesome. It's going to be the dinner that you'll see a little bit of in mine, uh, but in far greater delicious detail. Here we're focusing on photography. I thought when I was going out, this would be an awesome opportunity to get some shots of a non-professional couple, but a couple who are married, so have like obviously an awesome dynamic with each other. And I wanted to talk you through some tips, uh, my thought process when it came to getting the shots that I take, and also information as it relates to the lens that I use and setup that I used in this and how it's going to impact the shot in different ways. So to begin with, the, the first thing I talk about is my my gear so i'm using the sony a6500 that's a 24 megapixel cmos sensor mirrorless body with the sony color science which i like it's more of a desaturated i would argue kind of a mature look but that's personal preference the lenses though are two primes it's a ultra wide 16 millimeter and a 30 millimeter, both from Sigma. So incredible price performance lenses, and they're both super fast and they work really, really good in low light as does the Sony camera body. That's something else that they're renowned for. So I'll talk you through the specifics of those lenses as we go. And as I say, my thought process behind the shots, all while this cool backdrop of Tokyo Station, which is really, really beautiful and since Akina and Dustin are more frequently there. They showed me some spots that I'd never seen before. First tip for getting great shots, working with couples or anyone, professional or otherwise, is to have a good relationship with the people that you're shooting. This costs you no money. It happens before you even start shooting. And if it's not there, it's gonna have a really detrimental effect on everything that you do. So obviously I'm in a unique situation. I know Akina, I know Dustin, they're already my friends, but you could always feel more comfortable. And I think once you arrive to a shoot, it probably is worth spending a little bit of time just getting into a conversation, being social again, relaxing around each other, because that means that the person or people that you're shooting are going to feel trust. And I really do feel that's kind of the bedrock. It's the foundation to getting the sort of shots that you want, because that trust means that your subject's going to follow your instruction much better. They're going to be far more natural in front of the camera. There is a myriad ways that having a better relationship and developing a rapport is going to give you the shots that you want when you start to look at them after the shoot. Let's talk a little bit about location. So the important thing to remember is what are you focusing on? So in the case of couples or portraiture, really the subject is what is important and the background can be an afterthought. So going to the most remote, incredible place in the world, that can be cool, but you don't want to take the focus away from your models. And what then you could look for in the surroundings is simply a cool framing, and a cool framing doesn't need to be anything particularly extravagant. It could simply be a type of lighting, where lighting is, a cool framing that's around them. So don't get lost in feeling like you have to go to the craziest spot to get great shots with your models. You could be in the humblest place in the world, but for the symmetry of the surrounding area, you get some really, really interesting end results. Let's talk about the shots. First one up on the screen is going to highlight what I was talking about in terms of find a cool symmetry in whatever location you are. So there were these cool fairy lights and there were these trees that created this natural sort of circular framing that I could put Akina and Dustin up against. So that's really cool. I was going with this theme of powerful 
And so an easy way to achieve that, you'll see this in every single Michael Bay film, is simply to shoot from a lower angle. That's going to give the person in it way more presence, way more power. So those are two things that I was looking for when I did this. I was also leaning into, I like original shots just as much as I like something to be beautiful. And at first I thought, do I get them to take the masks off? No, let, let's leave it on for an original look. And I think that that really worked out well together. So especially worth noticing here before we move on to the next photo as well, is the characteristic of using an ultra, ultra wide lens, which is what I did in this case. So when you use ultra wides, why they are traditionally not what you want to use for portraiture is that whatever sets at the middle of the frame is going to pop out. So you can imagine if you have somebody's head that you're taking a picture of, it's gonna make it look bulbous and like it's popping out. But if you get enough distance and you have this sort of setup like I do here, it means that the couple together are going to pop out of the frame and we're not seeing any sort of brutal distortion of their facial features, but we're taking advantage of the fact that the presence you get at the center of the frame from the ultra wide is making the shot even stronger. The next image, this I wanna talk about lighting in this one. This is something I'm always interested in. This is the fundamentals of photography. Lighting on either side of them and then that's really going to highlight and get this beautiful light runoff on all the creases of their leather jacket. So something that I especially enjoyed in making this. And I'd speak to purpose now. When you're taking your shot, this is developing as you go, but what do you want? Do you want affection or do you want power? And in this case, I wanted power. So the immediate inclination that both of them had to begin with was leaning on each other more. But I suggested, why don't you guys be separate, be kind of standing unto yourselves. And I think the end result speaks to itself. Clearly to, they're together, but they're standing of, of their own free will, of their own strength, they're standing together. Now, last thing to notice because before I finish off this is, I didn't even intend this, but if you notice down the center of the frame is this line that's followed by, if you look closely, it seems to be the cement above them and it creates a natural separation between either side of the photo. I wish I could tell you that I had intended that kind of framing uh, or the symmetry in the image, but I didn't. It's just a, a happy coincidence as we finish. You may have noticed that I never talked once actually about my process in Lightroom. And my thinking there is that far better to cover the fundamentals, things like what do you look for in your surroundings, like framing and lighting? Uh, what kind of effect is the lens that you're going to use have? Uh, do you have a good rapport and relationship with your subject, if it's a living one? These kind of things matter more than the sort of sliders that you're gonna mess around with after the fact in getting a really good shot. So it's more the place that you want to start. Thanks so much for watching the video. Uh, I hope you go over and check out Dustin. I will make one more appeal for that. And of course there was the link that was put up there for you guys to check out his video. I appreciate you very much. Um, if you got any sort of photography questions and you want some answers, I'm here to give them to you. So let me know in the comments down below for that. And I'd be curious as well, I'm using the Sony a6500 with these two lenses I mentioned. If you're shooting, what kind of camera are you using? Uh, it's incredible what you can get out of almost anything if you know what it is that you're doing. So let me know, I'd be curious. And final shout out to my patrons over on Patreon. You guys are amazing. If you don't already support me there, please do consider doing so. It means the world to me. And for now, the clock has run out. Catch you in the next one.